and admit her. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Emily. Hello. Thanks for being with us. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for being here. How are you today? Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Good. My um, two of my children have got big, big um exams at school coming up. So we're oh. all about um trying me trying to make them do lots of work and it's nice to take a break from all that actually and just leave them to it and not um not have to hang around going shouldn't you be revising <laughs> how are you we're good how is covid over there for you guys are you guys locked down are you more back to a semblance of normal they've they've kind of said here like covid is over and everything's back to normal but it it isn't um lots and lots of people have got it but they just they just removed absolutely every restriction there is so we've most of us most people i know have had it um in the last few months i had it but i was i had three vaccinations but i was still really um knocked out by it for about a month it was really grim so oh wow a lot of um almost everybody i know has had it quite recently so yeah, yeah. that's fun and then it's catching it again now so yeah not great how about over there how are things co-workers also triple vaxxed and she got it and she was out for about seven weeks oh, oh wow yeah. Oh. yeah and she's like young and super healthy and fit and yeah just knocked out i saw her for the first time yesterday oh yeah it's it's really bad isn't it yeah. it's just just going on and on like yeah, yeah yeah and i'm i'm so smug i haven't caught it yet um, oh well done. No, i know i'm going to at some point <laughs> oh, yeah and you're yeah. out there so much uh, uh, yeah i, mean, you're I, out. I mean, it have been from the start um yeah i i'm a social worker so yeah at some point i'm gonna get it but i've been really smug until then so i know when it gets me it's gonna really get me <laughs> well maybe not you might be one of those people who don't catch it although generally when people say that they um yeah, my son was yeah. my son who's 18 he was very much like no you know all my friends have had it i haven't i'm immune i'm not going to get it and then he was saying that as he was watching the test turning positive and then um, <laughs> oh <laughs> no <laughs> um so but yeah maybe maybe you won't i hope you don't it's, it's a strange situation like last night we we met friends at a restaurant and you're in this situation of do I wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. If you're going to the grocery store, I, I take my cue. If the people who work there are wearing masks out of respect for them, they're wearing masks. I'm going to wear a mask. But it's it's this game you're playing because you, yes. my husband has business meetings and they all go in wearing masks. But then there are people they're meeting with. Some are wearing masks. Some aren't. I mean, it's all over. The, it's all over the place. You don't know what to do. Yeah, it really is. I was teaching a residential writing course, um, which was quite a long way away from where I live um, in England. And I, I went, I, they asked everyone to do a test before we went. So I did, tested negative, went up there on a train. Um, then the rules there were very much like wear one if you're walking around, but you can't spend a week writing with people like everyone wearing masks all the time so that we don't like at meal times there was no masks and in um the first evening we had a session where everybody was sitting around in a room and everybody was each of the students was talking about what they were writing it was really really lovely and just towards the end of that first evening i started coughing and then i started feeling mm. like maybe i'm just really yeah. tired because i had to get up so early and then in the morning i woke up feeling just like this isn't oh. right did a test straight away and um it was so positive so i was stuck up there and then it turned out i i had unknowingly infected two of the students there and then two oh. others caught it from them by the end of the week and i started my own little little outbreak i felt really bad but one of the students was i shared a taxi with her and she was wearing one of those actual proper masks the um where the n95 or whatever right. in the cab and she didn't get it whereas everybody else the person I sat next to at dinner, the person I was talking to at the drinks before yeah. dinner, they caught it. So that made me think like, I must actually try and in a confined space where possible, right. wear a, a, a yeah. proper, proper grade mask. But 
but I, yeah I felt obviously felt really really bad for unknowingly going there and well I mean executing. that's the thing you can't though because there's yeah. there's so much of it out there that there's so much that it could have been at any time and and people chose to be there yeah and you followed you got tested before I mean you did mm-hmm. everything you could and so you did the best you could with yeah. what you knew and had and yeah I guess that's all that's all we could do isn't it yeah. I still I still wear my mask I'm not I'm not ditching masks my yeah. mom just had major heart surgery and yeah. so I have to be safe for her and then safe for myself I could not be vaccinated due to allergies so mm-hmm. I'm like I live a pretty careful life so like Jesse knock on wood I have not gotten it but I'm I'm not out I don't have to be out I work from home and yeah I'm surprised I haven't caught it yet because I I go into the jails quite frequently um to meet with clients we yeah. do wear masks in there because uh, it's in the jails very much so um so I wear masks so I think that's what, ha- what has helped but mm-hmm. yeah, I think it does it does really really help <laughs> I just I'm going to Ireland next month mid-May oh, wow. and we keep getting notices you know about um I was supposed to get tested which everybody does um within the day before within the 24 hours before you get on the plane you need to be tested and have a negative result else they won't let you on the plane well one of my friends who's going on the trip with me is constantly calling all airlines and everybody and apparently they haven't announced it yet but ireland's not going to that the air ireland right now doesn't require that you have a negative test so the airline delta is not going to require us to have that test because the country we're going to is not requiring it which you know okay (laughs) yeah yeah and then also um right now there's a big push on here to drop the mask requirement and my little group there's four of us ladies we will be wearing masks on the plane but they there i warned my friends there may be people on the plane who don't wear their mask if that gets dropped so keep that in mind (laughs) Yeah, a plane is is a very enclosed space with a lot of air circulating, the same air circulating around, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, not... Of course, when we planned this two years ago, we thought we'd be free and clear. (laughs) I was going to say, who knew it would become what it's become? Yeah. So I guess that's a good segue into this book that you're joining us for we we could easily transition into things to do before the end of the world sometimes it does indeed feel like it is the end of the world it does it does indeed very witty very clever and I appreciate that so much oh thank you oh thank you for reading it that's really lovely because I know it doesn't have a U.S. publisher so it's not a straightforward um, book to get hold of no, and we even have even more people that have read it, but just couldn't be here because of Easter. So sure. that's why we're recording so that they'll be able to listen since they couldn't oh. be with us, but they wanted to at least hear the discussion. So oh, that's really lovely. Thanks that's for so nice. being here. And we love having you. Oh, having you, you back. Oh, so what, was, Gorgeous. <laughs> what was your inspiration for this one? Um, this one, actually, I... <sighs> I wanted to write a book that was um, set in European countries because it was around the time when I was writing it, it was it was kind of after the Brexit referendum had happened, but before it actually come into into force. And I was so upset by that. I wanted to write a book about traveling around Europe and how wonderful it is. And so that was the starting point, I think. And then the actual apocalypse came element of it came quite late into the story although um, it then became the focus of it and I think I had the story I also wanted to write something about um, fake psychics because I was just so interested in that and I went on a a course a one-day course to learn how to basically be a, a fake psychic or um which was it was so interesting um it was 
run by a guy called Ian somebody who wrote a book about cold reading where people will just talk to somebody pick up cues from them and then reflect it back to them and and pretend to be um to be kind of receiving messages or whatever and it, it so it was that I that was one I wanted to write about something about that because I was so interested in it and have a European setting and I went to this one day course to learn how to um how to pretend to be well how to do cold reading or how to pretend to be psychic mm -hmm. and it was quite a long way away from where I live because where I live is quite a remote part of the UK so it was a big journey to get there I booked it and then at the very last minute my husband turned out to be free and decided to come with me so thank goodness he did because I got there and um, walked into this room it was like one of those function rooms in a hotel so it was mm -hmm. all um, a bit sort of like it was like breathing aeroplane air patterned carpet low ceiling um, all a bit a bit um, claustrophobic and everybody else in the room was a man and <laughs> I think about 70 percent of them were trying to pick up these skills to pick up women basically so oh that they could be like God. oh let me read your palm that kind of oh. so they were basically <laughs> pick up artists oh it, was, <laughs> it was so weird it was one of the weirdest <laughs> days of my life I don't know what I was expecting but what I was expecting wasn't, wasn't what it Funny. was so I was so so glad I had Craig my husband at my side so I just had somebody to um, to sit with otherwise I don't I, I don't know what I would have I don't know how long I would have lasted but it was really really interesting um and he kept getting people out to demonstrate how to how to do a palm reading and and just pick up on the things people's responses and mm -hmm. and draw things out of that and turn negatives into positives um it, yeah it was really interesting a really really interesting skill at one point you had to do a reading on somebody you didn't already know. So I just immediately picked the least weird looking out of all these guys in the room <laughs> and straight over to him. He was like the co-organizer or something. I just went straight over to him and was like, I, I need to read your palm because everybody else <laughs> I was getting weird, weird, weird vibes off. <laughs> so that was that was fun. That gave that me a lot, funny. a lot of um, material. <laughs> yeah, I know who who knew these things these things go on and it was it was the first event in a whole weekend of of um that kind of thing going on in, uh -huh. in Newcastle with, which is up in the northeast of England over the the whole weekend so these guys um yeah they were having quite quite a weekend of it the moment it was finished I just got hold of Craig and I was like no, <laughs> we're going to the pub right now uh, far away far far away from these people so that was I had that as a, a kind of um element of the book and the european bits um the madrid setting we'd been to that place on holiday and the paris i think i just love paris so that was really lovely to write about and then so i was quite far into it when i thought this actually needs something um big to happen in the backdrop of it it just wasn't quite holding together as an exciting book and then i thought well maybe you know let's bring in some climate change anxiety and things like that into it as well and so that that came in fairly late actually later than you think but I think as as uh, before you joined us Brittany and Jesse were talking about how it didn't have this heavy apocalyptic kind of you know there it was there but we also had the story of this young girl and you were able to capture her voice which I think you know, is something that's difficult to get into an adolescent voice and it seems real and authentic. Oh, and so you. it was, it wasn't dark and oppressing despite the end of the <laughs> world. <laughs> so that was kind of a magic trick, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Yes, her voice um, was, it was probably the most personal young adult book I've ever written because I was really shy when I was younger and I, I just felt like I wanted to write that that kind of feeling of of wanting to talk and not being able to and not knowing what to say um, I remembered it so vividly so I just thought I'd I'd put all of that in there as well and then have this stranger turn up who's um, who's the opposite and who's very manipulative to kind of draw her out of herself but yeah I at one point it was initially going to be that the end of the world was was like a meteor strike and they were all going to be looking up at the sky like like don't look up um but my editor said it should be something that humans have done 
so I had to sort of rework it into um, invent a bit of a bit of science there but I and when it was I was going to have it narrowly averted and end with her at drama school and on a really upbeat positive note using all the um, skills she'd got over her her hot summer um, mm-hmm. in in Spain and and France but then I couldn't do that so um, I just had to leave it leave it just at the end of the world I'm glad you did it what do you think Brittany Jesse? Yeah, no, I, I, you know me, I like, I like endings that aren't always like tied up in a bow or um, necessarily happy where it's kind of like, I mean, I think, yeah, the world ends, they, they, they stop breathing, but um, uh, I'm, I'm glad the experiences that she had up until then. Um, But I, yeah, I liked, I liked the ending. I liked that it wasn't like, and then the scientists figured things out. (laughs) Yeah, I (laughs) I so wanted to do this. I was just figuring things out. It's weird to think like every character you're writing, you're writing them for them to die on this particular date. But um, yeah, quite fun too in in its way. Yeah, yeah I, I also agree. I like that it didn't kind of end in that perfect bow, but then that's why I love having you with us because I'm like, what do you think happened next? What do you <laughs> envision? Did the world end? Does she end up at drama school? Like, does she take everything she's learned now? Well, I like to think that that she ended up at, at drama school with everything she learned. But I think really, I think that um, the the air ran out and it, it all went bad because that is what she <laughs> seems to to like. Humans are just really bad at dealing with environmental things. I think, and um, I feel like it probably did not end in a very good place. I feel like that would be a horrible way to die. Yeah. I think it I think it was just yeah the running out of air yeah absolutely when I was in Svalbard up, like up in the Arctic when I was um my my first young adult book the one memory of Flora Banks is partly set up there and I went up there on a research ship loved it went back lots of times including on my honeymoon and and there they were you could see the permafrost there and and it's so weird what's what's buried underneath it so I thought that I mean that that might literally happen things things will come out of there they've got yeah um, they had some I think some bodies buried um from the Spanish flu and and then because of the oh, the earth moving they yeah. were actually coming up to the surface it was really really mm-hmm. weird so they had they'd sort of um cordoned off this this bit of of graveyard because the bodies were just coming out of the ground and oh my and, gosh and the 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 um diseases and things like that that are down there you just don't know what what could actually as as things melt up there you don't know what is actually going to come out it's all all very weird so yeah. that was where I looked for for the inspiration for what might actually be happening yeah although hopefully it won't I was gonna say I hope it all stays down there I hope it does too yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the nicest way I can say that is I hope it all stays down there or buried <laughs> where it is where it, where it should be where it should be absolutely yeah well I so, I was intrigued by and here it is Easter some of the Easter eggs you had in the book and you know I, I've got a couple of them written down that I wanted to talk to you about and I only found two I'm Brittany and Jesse probably have more, but um, Natalie's eye color changed. And I, mm-hmm. that, you know, on page 105 of the book I have, anyway, you know, she's got clear blue eyes. And then on page 174, she's got dark brown eyes. And I thought, mm. she's, she's giving us some little clues here on different things. And then her dress, her silver dress. Which was described that it had the same puff sleeves as the one that um, Libby, Lizzie, what's her, Libby, 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 yeah, is wearing. Yeah, then when they take off her silver dress is strapless, and so I'm thinking, what is she doing here? She's giving us, she's giving us these different messages about Natalie that we're supposed to be picking okay. up on. Natasha, yeah, Natasha, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is, um, I can't remember this. I, I was looking for my copy of it. Actually. I've got a million books behind me. Um, the, the dress thing, I, 
I don't, I, I'm going to have to, to actually look at that. I'll have it on my laptop. Um, the eye colour, she is, um, yeah, just changing her. She's changing to be, to have the, the same look. She wants yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, she is changing to be, to be super manipulative. I'm just looking for the, um, the dress things. I, I went shopping for those dresses online and, oh. and um, saved them, saved the pictures of them and was, um, oh, I, I so wanted to buy them, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't afford it. I spent absolutely ages saying to myself, this is work just looking <laughs> looking on these vintage dress sites to find their two dresses I've still got the the photo somewhere but if the dress has changed that was probably a mistake well and not necessarily I mean I'm I may be just overthinking this but you it was actually it was very charming they were in there together they were trying the dresses on and mm. Libby's talking about her dress and it's kind of this kind of vintage it's got and she says in Natasha's dress it has the same puff sleeves and then I thought well maybe there's more than one dresses and then you refer later to you made a point about two perfect dresses she had the bag with both our dresses and then that night when they go out in Paris and they've got their dresses on she says um, that silver dress is strapless and I thought well I thought it had the same. I don't know why I'm picked up on that but I thought yeah. that you know, you were playing with us and playing with Natasha and how manipulative Tasha was with her, her transformation, which she was doing quite intentionally and getting Libby to go along with the, the transformation, mm -hmm. you know, the, the makeup, the hair, getting her hair cut, getting, you know, she was actually getting thinner and tanned and they were <laughs> kind of morphing into this these twins and she made a real Natasha want that wanted them to be seen that mm. way oh she, yeah there were so many red flags that of course yeah. again, the line of work I'm like picking up on that I'm like okay red flag red flag red flag <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah she's much too much much too trusting <laughs> um yeah I, I'm I'm gonna find my photo oh, don't don't message. don't you know how we we've had this come up before readers get obsessive about the most ridiculous thing <laughs> that's what i'm doing we've, we've had that happen before and it's no, just that's like, great um get past that and authors have to put up with these obnoxious comments from people no it's really interesting <laughs> um i'm i know that i've got the photo and i'm It'd be interesting to see it. Second. Maybe I can, yeah, if I'll, you can find it, I can make you a presenter, I think. Um, and then we can see it, which would be fascinating. Let me see yeah. how I did this from my iPad. I'm like on the computer, I know how to do it. You can share it in the chat. Although yeah, I guess there's a share. I haven't done that in so long. I had, right when with the, we started doing the Zooms, I had to do shares with some of my friends, but I haven't done it since then. Oh, see, I've done so many trainings on Zoom at this point for like service providers. I'm mm. like, it down. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I had no idea about Zoom. And then as the moment um, lockdowns come, then um, every everybody knows <laughs> all about how to yeah. use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a quick adjustment. I had a, yeah, we had all the quick studies with it. I just feel yeah. sorry for the teachers because it's one thing to have, adults here but i'm trying to teach a, a classroom a and classroom a i don't year old. know so you do that yeah that must teach be math so to hard. 10 year olds <laughs> see do you know with all your training how i add that presentation option oh my god i just don't know how to do it for my ipad on the computer it's really easy yeah i was going to say from the ipad i don't know because i've never done it zoom well, from them i haven't done the zoom on she could share it in the chat and we would at least be able to see it and then maybe Brittany, you could um show it if you share your screen but the more important thing is is that scene in the vintage store was was them coming together but also a little bit of them starting to come apart because at that point mm. Libby starting she's already plotting her getaway right that she's gonna yes be, yeah i'm going exactly. to get this dress 
and I'm going to wear this dress to this first party, but then I'm gone. So yes. it's, it's kind of critical scene. And yeah. Just, like, she made a whole deal about, oh, I'm not looking as you like put in your pin. Um, I was like, <laughs> okay, so now she's got the pin number. And when, yes, exactly. Like, oh, you have to pay. And I was like, all right. <laughs> happening it's starting now absolutely yeah you, you yeah you really kind of kept us going with Natasha because she would say oh no we're, I'm not going to dip into any of your money we're going to earn the money and so we we're kind of like oh well, that's kind of cool that Natasha's not <laughs> taking Every any of this that, money. I was like she's going for her money I was, like, yeah. oh, I was gonna say I yep. saw right through that I'm like yeah. oh I was like okay so her goal is to get to that money somehow Okay. Yes, exactly. She's being too um too yeah. nice about it. Too, too when she was pushing so it. much, like going to Paris, going to Paris, and was like, all right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have I have the photo on my Twitter account. I can't find it in my photos, but I have found it here. I'm not sure if I can pull it back off my Twitter or do a screenshot. Hang on. It's got a what a rose at the or a flower at the waist kind of thing. Um, you really like zeroed in on these dresses. Now. I, I was say, you I, like I, that was your like, favorite part. These it's like that, why, I feel so sorry for authors that they write a book and then somebody you know does well that couldn't possibly have happened in 1978 <laughs> because they had yet yeah, built that model and you're like okay that's not really the point that whether that the model <laughs> car came out in may or june and they, you know and then they're driving it just get past that just move <laughs> on <laughs> no it's it's interesting because books go through such a process of um oh there we go um of editing and you feel like like surely that must have caught absolutely everything and um it yeah there's always you can never edit it enough somehow I thought it was intentional because I thought it was Natasha's more of her subterfuge you know, yeah oh, let's... her eye color she could be changing her dress you know or it's Libby trying to come to terms with who Natasha really is because she's yeah. in between at this point and she's you know Natasha's going around this store and pulling dresses out and then maybe she pulled one out that was similar to Libby's intentionally but then that's not what she ended up she wouldn't ended up wearing yeah yeah maybe and she so... did let's let's say that she did there we go right I've got the two dresses so I can I put them into the chat? You should be able to. Okay, you know, I'm so sorry I hijacked this with this. No, dress. that's really interesting. It's it's actually really nice to see these um these two dresses again. You're like, oh, I wish I bought them. <laughs> yeah, I really do. They're so nice. Um, but I can't, I can't seem to put them. Maybe you can email them to me, and then I can make sure that Phyllis and Jesse see them. Yeah. Do <laughs> you want to just send me that email? Totally. Yeah. Um. So I'm just replying to your email about with the Zoom details in. Is that the right email? Yeah, I think that's perfect. And then you can pop them in there. Great. So now are there any things that you would do if the world was ending and we were running out of oxygen? That was oh. one of the I wanted to ask is what would be on your bucket list? Is there anything like relationship wise you would want to mend or any activities you would want to do or any places you would want to go? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, I, I feel like I would probably want to go to as many places as possible, particularly since um it's been so long I haven't I love um going traveling and I haven't been anywhere really for for two and a half years because of COVID I haven't left this country for for that long and normally because of where we are located it's quite easy to go across to Ireland or to France and particularly where I live we um there's a ferry to France um that goes from a from Plymouth which is about an hour away on the train from here so i 
just love traveling around and this little corner of um, England where I live we've been here about 15 years now because of the children being um, being in the schools and I would just you know I'm counting down the days basically until they've all left home and um, <laughs> we can move somewhere else because it is it's a it's like the the very southwest corner of England it has been I don't want to talk about Brexit all the time but it's been really badly affected by Brexit because we got a lot of EU funding there's a lot of farmers here and and uh -huh. it's because it's so far from London um there's not very much work here there's not a big city and it's anyway it just feels like things are really not going to be great over the next few years and I get I've spent so much time online house hunting for I'm like let's go and live in Paris let's go and live here. <laughs> let's, let's move to France let's move to Spain why don't we go and live in Norway so I think I would like to go traveling I would also obviously like to spend all my time with my children and I think that would be the the big emotional thing as a parent would be that you don't want that to happen to your children more than anything else um but if I could just sort of push them out of it, I would want to just have all the experiences in the world possible, particularly travel, travel related. Yeah. What about you guys? I think traveling. Yeah, I think that's what I would want to do at the end times. Just go wherever I possibly could. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I haven't done enough traveling, but that's always when I'm my happiest or I'm having my most fun. So just to get mm. as many experiences and see as much art, you know, and culture and things like that as possible. Yeah. yeah. Maybe go, go dive the Great Barrier Reef. Mm. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. I'd like to see the Louvre in Paris. So it's been on my bucket list. I want to see the Eiffel Tower. I like it was that. interesting. You had the Louvre in there with it. It was free. Yeah, that's what I yeah. like. So I thought a I lot like, of those details were just so so interesting. It was kind of like a little journey. I mean, I think I'd probably just want to go stay at that place. They were in Madrid. That was no, they weren't in Madrid. They were outside of Madrid, mm -hmm. where the, her family was, her parents, and they had this beautiful little garden and this little. It was just so charming, and they could walk down the street to the cafe. And I thought, well, I just stay there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this would be a good place to finish out life yeah that would yeah, be all right was, wouldn't yeah, it was, that's what I was thinking I was like just stay there honey just stay there <laughs> yeah exactly um I yeah that would be a great place to be and then you can you can go into Madrid if you if you want to go and look at some art and and culture yeah. and then go back to your little your little hideaway place which yeah, food is so good in Madrid yeah like just stay there yeah yeah, yeah, no, that that would do that would do me as well. <laughs> and we did we did stay in that that exact place on um, on holiday the year before. Was it 2019, 2018? Um, and it was just somewhere I booked from Airbnb, really random. And we flew to Madrid and caught the bus out there. Didn't hire a car because I didn't fancy driving a, a car through Madrid. I got no idea, no idea how you drive in Madrid. Um, and, and it was just exactly I just wrote the place exactly like it was it was it it was the garden was just overflowing with stuff and there were tomatoes everywhere and they would the people who owned it would come and give us vegetables from their garden and there was a swimming pool and it was sunny and it was just absolutely idyllic so I was writing it while sitting there so I, somehow I was obviously writing the, just writing what I could see around me at that point which was nice I liked the detail of uh henry or harry the tomato oh, yeah. <laughs> Real cute. yeah he um he came into it while i was while i was there because i was watching this this tomato just ripening up on the on the vine going oh you're nice <laughs> we're gonna eat you mm -hmm. <laughs> and um that that heat um and the and the having the pool there. i think just being really hot in the sunshine and then being able to just jump into water it's like that would do me it would totally do me forever lovely I like that the father Libby's father who's on his fourth fourth <laughs> marriage and yeah. so you kind of had this impression of him as not being very as being rather cold and remote and 
you know, not that interested anymore in his adolescent daughter because he's got these two very small children and this young, uh, you know, beautiful wife. And, you're, and you just have this impression of him. Yeah, but that's not how it played out. I mean, he did come and and care about her and save her and take care of her and so I like that that yeah he had to step up again absentee dad you know <laughs> yeah yeah I I did want him to have to step up and and kind of show her in the end that she did she did matter to him mm-hmm. and yeah I like the um the little children my my dad isn't quite like that but he he did have a second marriage after me and my brother and um two much younger children who I just used to love looking after them so that bit is also quite drawn yeah. from from memory and now they're they're all grown up now um <laughs> incredibly successful and and brilliant and um yeah it's it's strange my um do you have a tv series called gentleman jack from the bbc over there is that is that on your i think it's available on i haven't watched it it's on my list i think oh, it's cool. available it may be on uh brit box or acorn or one of those oh, I think yeah they get, they get a lot of the british mm-hmm. yeah so my my little sister's um producer of that now she's oh okay all grown oh. up <laughs> from being that little toddler yeah. <laughs> and the um my little brother is um a deputy foreign editor at the telegraph newspaper so i look at them now and i'm like mm-hmm. oh you're all so you're so grown up. Hey, they didn't perish. They didn't perish. They, yeah, they didn't <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they you could save them. them. You could save. Yes, them. exactly. You could save them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they ended up ended up fine. So that's nice. We're now currently all trying to persuade our our dad in his eighties to move somewhere a little bit more suitable, and it's <laughs> it's been quite a long a long process. So. But we're all banded together to do that at the moment. Yeah. Sorry, I had to mute myself for Annabelle. Somebody was in the backyard and she was oh. <laughs> barking. I met my parents today for Easter. Ah. And she was, I don't know what she saw, but she saw something and she was quite loud. <laughs> oh, really? She... It's sometimes so there's deer in their backyard they live on the side of a mountain and so occasionally there'll be like deer and things like that oh wow she's usually petrified of them she doesn't bark at them but today she's decided to be brave and bold <laughs> i like the uh, magic tricks you know yeah. it was believable that natasha had picked these up and then pass them on and that, that was all very real red flags to me too because i was like at 18 she's a hustler she like, is <laughs> like she's doing some stuff and so i was like okay all right whatever you've been through in life yeah you've learned, uh, you've learned some hustles you're a hustler yeah <laughs> yeah that was quite fun i i learned how to do those i felt like i couldn't write them properly unless i learned how to do them so i did that was do you do little... them now are you like um, hey <laughs> I I haven't for a while, but I did get you know the when you flick through the little book and mm-hmm. and predict what somebody's going to say what you know when they stick their finger in it. I bought one of those books and filled it all in and um, yeah, I still sometimes do that on people if I uh, everybody I know I've I've done it on before so they know what the answer is going to be. But I I do sometimes get that out. I've still got it. It's um, it's quite fun because it's like if my <laughs> my daughter had a friend around the other day and we we did our, our little trick on on her and you could kind of see it it does look really good it looks really impressive um just mm-hmm. by kind of flipping it over and flicking the pages the other way where they all say the same thing so it yeah it it, it is still um really really fun to do and I can see why um somebody like Natasha would just be like well this looks amazing so we can we can make money out of it mm-hmm so yeah that was uh, yeah I did I did do quite a lot of I learned quite a lot of interesting um, skills I was gonna say you really picked up a lot for this one I did (laughs) this one a lot more than than I usually do yeah a lot of interesting growth to write this book (laughs) and then it was um it was delayed by a year by COVID so that was um that felt a bit like you know you write a book about an apocalyptic event and then along comes a an apocalyptic a, event yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. it feels like one Something. at times at least it would yeah. make a good series you know we've we've had some books that um have been picked up for series and of course it's interesting because the authors tell us that they when it gets made into a limited series they totally change absolutely yeah <laughs> everything is just almost unrecognizable to them but I, I think yours could pretty much I stay the same what happens I guess with with some of the others is they have way too many characters and when they want to go and make it into a series they just start cutting characters like crazy going we're you know we're not going to have 12 to 15 yeah. people in there <laughs> yeah you know narrow it down and yours yeah. is already there plus it's got all the you know beautiful places and these two young beautiful girls and and I think it it would be something I'd watch <laughs> oh thank you it'd be lovely if if anybody did it's um it's such a strange thing that because it's like the thing you always want to happen to your book and then sometimes it does and I've never had one actually make it to to being a series but I have currently got one of my old books from 2013 is almost there I don't think they've quite it's not quite confirmed yet but it's much closer than any of the others have got um to be a tv series probably on like the the Brit box type type mm -hmm. of, of thing and um I had so I had this call with their zoom with them where they I think they're quite nervous generally the tv people of their first conversation with the author because they don't know what you're gonna whether you're gonna be like <laughs> no you mustn't change one single word mm -hmm. but, but my feeling was just like do whatever you want with it and have fun with it it's like a different thing it's a different thing when it's on it's tv different. from from how it is as a book so I'll be if it does go ahead I'll be really interested to to see how they do it as mm -hmm. a as a tv series and yeah I feel like no kind of possessiveness no no part of me going okay mm -hmm. no keep it as my story because it yeah it just you're right it just becomes not that anymore and um, the the whole practical considerations are totally different mm -hmm. so yeah um yeah is did you you had sarah Bourne on here once didn't you because i used to work yes. with her yes. from oh, really? sure did. last year she was here yeah so hers is obviously on netflix now just arrived on netflix i think i haven't uh haven't yes, which one did. is that Brittany? um it wasn't the one that we had talked about um oh okay okay it, it was a different one than what we had met with her about let's see it was a book previous to oh, okay yeah. I can look it up later. I just yeah, I'm looking really. That's fast. interesting, though. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah that's... The anatomy of a scandal was the one. That's the one. That's on. That just got made into a series. Yeah, which is which is kind of what what you always want to happen, and you know, it's amazing that it has has mm -hmm. worked out for her as this glossy Netflix series because every other author I know, things will get part of the way, and then sure. Just, yeah it's just never you know getting the funding and all everything that needs to come into place just seems so impossible so it's really nice to see somebody see actually working for somebody um, and we that's we've learned a little bit through um our club that how some of the things work for the authors it's interesting the whole process and you know one of them said oh she got the first time she got optioned you know she was all excited and then what she realized with time was yeah, you can get option. You got a long, long, long way mm -hmm. to go. The, the option you know, it was exciting the first time. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Me too. It's so yeah. exciting the first time. You're like, right, this is definitely it. And plus, people always say to you, oh, sell the movie rights, and, and you know, you'll be you'll be really rich. And that's definitely not the case. I think yeah. when I when I started out, when my first book was optioned, that was about. Um, I think they paid me about five thousand pounds, which was great. Mm -hmm. And now, this one that's currently going, they just pay me five hundred pounds every six months to keep the option. And and so the like even the value of that has gone down yeah. enormously. Um, now I think there's just so many books and so many right. projects out there that nobody's really got the money to even. You don't really even make any money from it until it gets a lot further along the process. Although I do like it every six months when. And my sure. 500 pounds come in, comes in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yes, yeah, that's nice, but it's obviously not going to actually um, keep pay pay your bills for very long. Mm 
Mm -hmm. No, and it would be much more exciting if it was turning into something too, also, I'm sure. Yeah, it would. It would, yeah. Yeah, it just just carries on. And every now and then um, I get an email from the, the producer going, oh, we're nearly there. We've got a little bit more in place. But everything, things move so slowly. This has been going on for years now. Um, so I, I forget all about it. And then it's will kind of pop up going, we've got, we got, you know, this person interested in, I think mm -hmm. they have, and also they have to change the nationalities of the characters. So I think for this one, for the sleeper, which which was the book, um, she's got some Aus Australian and Irish investment. So they're going to put like make one of the characters oh. Australian and another one Irish. <laughs> that's <laughs> so funny. That's like, yeah, do that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> all those yeah. things you just never think of. Oh, that is that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think a, that's sometimes the most interesting part is when you've read it, and especially if you love it, kind of seeing how it translates into film or TV. Yeah, yeah, it's funny when if you really love a book and then it's so changed for the for the film or the yeah. TV, it can be you'd like really possessive it's disappointing. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, it at that point I'm like, I wonder how the author felt. I'm like, because this is not what they wrote, and I love what yeah. they wrote. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how they feel. I'm like, because yeah. I'm sad. <laughs> yeah because well, I had an idea in my head like I had a movie in my head and you did not bring it to life exactly <laughs> yes not not fair yeah not fair at all. yeah well can you tell us anything that you're working on now what is Evie Green yeah doing? Evie Green yeah. is currently very busy um doing some last edits on um the book it's called the new one and it's um it's about a family living in a slightly near future Cornwall here where I am where things have just got much worse and so they're living in they're like living in a trailer and um, uh, in poverty really and then their teenage daughter who's very difficult is in a road accident and like in a coma and then these people mysterious people turn up and go we we can give her a place on the medical trial and they end up moving to Switzerland and, and suddenly being put thrown into this it's very luxurious life but the the payback is that the medical trial is to make a clone of her with some ai um enhancements oh, so wow. they get their daughter back but it's not that but their daughter is also still in in the coma in the hospital so they get this new daughter and she's amazing and much much easier to live with than the old one and and really clever and she speaks two languages perfectly and um so everything's amazing and then the old one wakes up again and the new one doesn't like her so they're like <laughs> <laughs> well sign me up sign me up Bessie by the way is my daughter so <laughs> <laughs> you, which version are you Jesse <laughs> difficult <laughs> I don't think I'm that difficult you're not oh. <laughs> now go go back a few years and different answer <laughs> always been a delight <laughs> i believe that jesse i think you're delightful i enjoy having you i was always it's been a delightful. long road to delightful <laughs> <laughs> says mom <laughs> i was a good kid i was a good twin you were yeah. so when is this one due out um next year i don't know quite when i would think toward, i mean they, i know that they know when because they are sort of rushing me a lot to to get everything into into um you know into production but nobody has quite told me exactly when I think I'm thinking probably well certainly 2023 I don't know I don't know when it will be but there will be some early copies before that and there is a cover of it which I could send you because nobody's yes. seen that and I haven't even described it to anyone like this before it's really nice to talk about it because I've been living in it while doing the final final edits to it uh -huh. and, um, and the fun part is you can kind of talk about it now which is exciting it is exciting yeah so yeah, so been, would you be um, interested in maybe doing an arc with us when it comes out love where we to could be like your group that reads it and reviews it for you we could do that like a recording that we could do we'll put a song list together of songs that are like inspired and then I'll design something that looks similar to the oh, cover with yeah. the song list that you could share on social that would be amazing love to do all of that thank you 
Let's do, you know, I love you. Let's do that. <laughs> let's, for, let's do it. Oh my, let's do it. Let's Emily do Barr, it. Evie Green, we've got your back. No matter which one it is, we love you across the pond. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so, so lovely. Um, yeah, that would be great. And I think I'm doing these last bits of editing now, and then next week it's going, a, it'll be off to the copy editor. That's why I'm doing this so quickly. Um, like, wake up early every day of the week to to just be like this is my last chance but it's not my last chance but it feels like my last chance to get it exactly how I want it and then it it'll go off to a copy editor and you know how it goes from there like back for more corrections off to a proofreader back again but it's this is basically the last time that it's only belongs to me so I'm trying to make it exactly how I want it to be and um, but because I know that they they want to kind of rush it into production, it shouldn't be too long before there is some form of copy of it available that I can get to to you guys. It'd be lovely nice. to get you the the earliest copy that that we have. I would yeah. love that, and then we'll read, review, put that fun song list together for you. Oh, thank you. I'll get you your arc reviews too, so that you can have them for launch. Oh, amazing. I'll make sure that I don't schedule it on a holiday so more people are actually with us. <laughs> Quite a few people had had lunches and, you know, brunches, and morning and posting and, and, and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, so that's again, yeah, we recorded it. Brittany does a recording for us. <laughs> yeah, so that everybody's able to hear it that read it. Oh, that's really nice. That is, that's so lovely. So yeah, it's so so nice of you to read that book when um, it 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 sort of fell right in the middle of the pandemic. So it didn't end up with a US publisher, which some of my young adult books have. But the last couple of years have just been. Um, I don't think. I don't. I don't know. Um, I think publishers are, are very nervous of like there might be more lockdowns and things like that, and so right. everybody's being very cautious yeah. about things. So hoping that with them um, with the new Evie Green book it might um it's not about a pandemic this time so okay <laughs> well, is there still the possibility that there be a U.S. publisher how does that work um probably not of the not of things to do before the end of the world but hmm. um yeah the because it's yeah it, it they sort of like to come in at the same time as it's um. as its main publisher but um with the Evie Green book with the new one so far that you know that's with Berkeley so that's with only got a US publisher at the moment because it's not finished and then I'm hoping that after after that it might get a UK publisher or um or elsewhere in the world you just never know one like my first young adult book ended up with 30 publishers across the world and then some of them end up with none and you just have no idea what's what's yeah. going to happen what's going to take off and what's not it's it's such a a strange unpredictable world but that's um yeah it's publishing you no know, your your permafrost idea i know that's of interest to you you said that you you go up there to the arctic circle a few times and it'd be interesting if you if you continued maybe to do something with that i i say that because years ago gosh it's probably i don't even know how long this book was out it was maybe 30 years ago i'm not sure um smell a sense of snow oh yeah uh, it's really haunting where they're up there in these for some kind of industrial reason and these divers go down of course in that incredibly cold water for what they're doing and they contract something that's in yes. the water it's, it's a very eerie book and it does have to do with that the thawing and the, there have been it was a series Steve and I watched that was just okay it got it went way off the rails it started good and then sometimes mm. the science fiction ones start so good and then they they fall off and it was yeah. set in the arctic where the th permafrost was thawing and oh. things like you mentioned not exactly like you mentioned but it was the same kind of element but unfortunately, then it went way into crazy town and kind oh, of no. lost, lost its drama <laughs> because of that, because it became so unrealistic. Whereas I think, you know, you would keep it as you did this book, where I'm not going to get into all the kind of science and bore you with all the different <laughs> scientists saying we can do this and that. I'm just going to have it there. You know, I'm just going to yeah. have it there. And then I'm going to go to the story. 
<laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's um I mean I I felt like as soon as I started if I went too deep into the science it would just become like way too complicated and it just needed needed a little bit of of kind of like here's some science and and that wasn't the yeah the science wasn't the point of it it was just something that was happening um, and it seems like the character wouldn't be like all into it like I feel like a 17 year old wouldn't be like let's watch the news <laughs> you know like yeah the 17 year old's gonna be like I really like my crush and maybe this is my- yes exactly do something and then the birds started falling out of the sky when they were <laughs> Paris, and then the, you know you kind of let us know that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's happening <laughs> yeah things aren't going so people well yeah. didn't you have people carrying around their dead dogs yeah. in their <laughs> in their handbag yeah, in their handbag. yeah. That, was, that was an interesting touch <laughs> yeah yes well, I think Paris is uh, you've probably been but Paris is very much a place where you'll see someone carrying a little dog in a handbag so it was just like one <laughs> one step on from there Brittany you're gonna need a big bag I was like my dog's large she's about 45 <laughs> pounds I'm gonna okay. need a heavy duty bag to you take are her you're gonna need a backpack <laughs> yeah, yes oh. there we go I could just have pop her little head out of the oh, oh. oh. Oh, it's Easter. Why did we go there? <laughs> I got the whole visual too. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Oh. Count on us to take it to that place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the um the birds falling out of the sky was just yeah. I, I spent quite a long time thinking, like, how can I make it clear that that things are happening and it's not going yeah not going well but without actually just seeing it on the news but something something to happen so I, i'm gonna take yeah. a quick, quick break but you know we haven't talked about um the mother oh amy yeah 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 i i thought that she was a good mom i mean you know like considering everything i don't know i think if i were a mom during all of this i'd be falling apart yeah you know like um, and then, so I think the mom was kind of like, all right, I guess go travel with this person. I want you to have these experiences. Um, and then reconnecting with her daughter, uh, with Violet. I like, yeah. 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 It was. Trying I, to I, navigate that. Hearing these end times. <laughs> yeah. It was difficult. Cause it was, it was difficult to, to kind of get to a point where she would say, okay, go off, go off and travel with this person. I hate but I mm-hmm. had to sort of make her fall apart a bit so that that could happen, that she would actually let, let her go. I, I don't know, that was, it was something I struggled with in the writing, the, like how can the mother actually say, yeah, off you go to Paris when it's such a clearly, clearly, clearly bad idea. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. yeah. I, I liked her kind of like backstory behind the story. You know, where it's like, okay, she's got this whole her whole thing that she's doing. There's a whole other book there. Um, yes, there is. Yeah. Reconnecting with her daughter, dealing with the depression and the anxiety of that, of that fallout, and then coming back to it. Um, you know, reconciling like how am I gonna talk to my current daughter about <laughs> yes, but... other daughter? Um, you know, and that being brought up, and then who is this random person that's shown up? Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a lot, <laughs> a lot to yeah. to get your head around. But yeah, I I liked her. I mean, she was she was trying really hard to be to be a good mom to both of them. Yeah, um, and trying to find like some kind of like yeah purpose in the end times with like looking at all these avenues of spirituality and mm. you no, know, I liked that. I liked the the story there, uh, the hidden backstory. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We started diving in to mom. <laughs> ah. To catch you up. Jesse bringing out her mom issues. <laughs> you did that while you were gone. Was that why you excused yourself? But Jesse, you know, she wanted to have a open get that out of the way. To, to have a chat. She was a better mom than my mom. 
<laughs> like she was a good like I thought she was a good mom considering everything happening and that there was a whole like book there like there was this, this kind of this hidden story within the story of her doing her own thing of reconnecting with the daughter and uh reconciling that and kind of like you know dipping down into depression but then coming out of it mm -hmm. yeah 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 she was she was trying really hard to deal with it but it was um it was really difficult yeah going down different avenues of you know how do we deal with this looming apocalyptic event yeah i like her dead father sean is it sean mm. oh, yeah. he was so supportive and just like all right yeah he seemed like a good guy yeah he's a good guy <laughs> Well, and the hard part is how do you cope like knowing like especially as the birds are like falling out of the sky like it's like even if you have those moments that are so happy that you forget that it's happening like there's those reminders that are there that are like well we're, you... we're going to have a segment if if this were to happen within the year you know we're going to have a segment of us that are, are just going to say it's not happening and you're like you literally just got hit by a bird yeah sky. well and that's what i wonder is i'm like i wonder which one i would be if i would be the like it's fine it's nothing's happening you know what i'm saying like the sweep up the birds else. sweep yeah. them up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't let anybody see that it's okay well, it's it's like COVID. there's so many people in the u.s that are like it's a conspiracy and it's like well the rest of the world is going through this too it's not just the u.s <laughs> like i'm pretty yeah. sure it's not just like yeah. The U.S. Democrats that have cooked this up, <laughs> the rest of the world is in on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the birds it's... are in on it. The birds are <laughs> crisis yeah. actors. Crisis yeah. actor birds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're well trying. <laughs> you know, back please. to the social media. Do you feel a lot of pressure? Here you are. You know, you're an author. You're writing. That's your occupation. That's what you do. But do you feel like you have to have this presence on social media also? Yeah, yeah, I think I think you do. And I, I, I think some some people don't. And I always um, kind of admire authors who who resist that pressure. But it's very much like you're you are expected to have a social media presence, particularly Twitter, which is probably my least favorite social media because it, it it's just so scary it, it doesn't take much um for it all to go wrong which it never has done for me but it's it it is very brutal isn't it so I yeah I kind of use Twitter to I follow people um like politically who um I'm interested in but I only use it for talking about books and book related mm -hmm. things because then it can be really nice and supportive but other otherwise it's um yeah it can be um can but be isn't that like yeah. having a whole nother job i mean you've already got writing which is mm. exhaustive and dealing with the books you've written and, and what's happening with them and the new books and then you also i mean because social media can take up a huge amount of your time also yeah it really can i i don't do it very much I um and I suppose when when there's a book coming out publishers will send you things you know like Twitter banners and and things to post and and that's fine I always feel like you know I don't like kind of posting like oh only five days to my books out and here's a here's a picture of the cover and it you don't kind of want to be that person because it's a bit the opposite of being a writer where you just want to to -hmm. stay you know stare at your at your book and make something up in a room by yourself so it is strange having to get out there and and do that kind of publicity but you just do it anyway and I I think some authors don't have social media accounts but I think that publishers really like it if you do I was talking to a guy the other day who's he had his first book out last year and he said he'd he was being really like, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not going to go on Twitter. And then they they talked him around. So now he he is on Twitter. And I, yeah, I think it's it's just expected. I think a few years ago it was more expected that that publishers taking on a new author would want you to have five thousand followers or something like that. And it was almost like had to be part of the deal. And now there's more of a feeling that it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't do that 
it doesn't make a huge difference to your sales actually so it's a li- feels a little bit less important than it did but but I still feel very much like you're you're expected to be there and then when you get your author copies you can do a giveaway and that makes people see your book online and um yeah it's it's a strange a strange part of modern life isn't it well I I thought and I, this has been a learning experience I thought that all these authors that the publisher would be taking care of all this for them and what we found out is th- these writers know they're not I thought well the publisher will do that the publisher will get all and yeah. they said no no they, no they don't they don't they really don't they don't do any of that um, that was kind of shocking to me yeah it's strange you you are expected to do really all all of that yourself like they'll they'll send you a box of copies and then if you want to do a giveaway you have to just decide how many to do and what platform to do it on and, and just run all of that yourself I don't I, I mean there's probably some authors who who can afford to pay somebody to do that for them but not very many right so it's really you you do have to do that that whole side of of it as well and then um I did quite a lot of teaching of writing just um as a as a kind of extra mm-hmm. extra income earner really so there's that as well and there's it, you can end up with with so much to juggle but yeah. it's you know it's fine it's it's not like having to go out to work so uh, I, I suppose I, 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 I kind of like it like that although it is also I know it's quite nice to actually have a job where you get paid every month on the same day and you know what's going on Mm-hmm. so it's um yeah it can feel quite quite insecure you but. know you did have money I thought this was interesting too you did money of course was very important because it's how these two girls were navigating you had to pay for your hotel oh you had the the uh hotel manager trying to get money out of them you know money's obviously there but at the same time you know as Sean is reminding them don't even worry about it whether or not this money's going to come through that they've inherited from the uncle or the the money it's it's just like forget about it because money's going to nobody's going to care in a few yes. weeks. it's like and in the whole thing with natasha so she's this you know con woman who gets griffs all this money and gets in the accounts and cleans out the accounts well that makes for you know maybe one one or two weeks of yeah spending money crazy going in and buying all kinds of designer clothes or whatever it is you want to do but ultimately who cares yeah yeah exactly yeah and she's just doing it because she wants to do it um yeah well knowing that that it really is it's almost meaningless almost completely meaningless um, but she's she's just doing it because she can in actually in my first draft of the book she wasn't the real cousin at all she was a total um confidence trickster but um it, it 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 my editor didn't like that oh <laughs> so she was somebody completely different hmm. but, yeah yeah, it it's changed. interesting to hear those differences I'm like I think I enjoy that like how things evolve and change through the writing process or what the editor thinks should stick and stay and- <laughs> yes. yeah. it, it is it is a very collaborative thing I think you you write your your first draft and then think that that's the book and then it it just isn't at all because you have so many other people in on the process before it actually becomes a book with, mm. with a cover on it on a shelf it changes so much I'm always saying that to my writing students that they they finish their first draft of their first book and think that that's it and that's just the very 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 beginning and the whole they make you in the process of publishing you have to read what you thought was a finished book so many times that by the time it's published I I I never want to open it I never want to (laughs) to look at it again I've kind of written so many drafts of it and then edited it and done the proofreading where you can't really change very much but you're just reading it for for typos and things like that and by the time that's over and it's it's finally sent off then I feel like yeah that one's done done. with it and on to the next 
on to the next exactly although it's really nice to to then revisit them and talk about it yeah yeah, yeah. I, I wrote that <laughs> yeah, like i was fond of that idea <laughs> yeah i enjoyed yeah, that research that. very exactly. interesting backstory mm -hmm. yeah so that's um yeah hopefully it's... the author prevails we had a a book do you remember this one Brittany? i think it's called he started it is that the name yeah. of it where the adult siblings are on this road trip that they're meant the to go on yeah and mm -hmm. the ending is is the right ending but the author told us that that's not at all what the edit editor wanted and oh. if, we, if she had done what the editor wanted in the ending it really would have ruined the book i would have oh. i would have ended up just throwing that oh. I, it would have been so wrong that it would have like trashed everything that had gone before so thank oh. goodness that the author prevailed but i was just like how could she have an editor who wanted to totally ruin everything oh. that had been led up to on this road trip? Everything, you know, like you, she was clever about getting this little hands about where we're going with different characters. And it would have been totally a reversal. So she did prevail, but it's like, That's wow, interesting. that was scary. That was scary. Oh, wow. Did you say Samantha? Was that Samantha Downing? Samantha Downing, yeah. Oh, okay. She's she has twice. She has the same editor as um as Evie Green. So um, oh. I am. Um, I have also had discussions with that same editor. Um, That's very much so. Okay. I yeah. am just causing trouble today. I am. <laughs> oh, 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 the dress. I know. I'm. Oh, same things yeah. about your editor and not even no that's that is really interesting because it's um yeah it, it she is um quite a strong-minded editor who will absolutely tell you if she doesn't think something's working and then I think it can be quite good for an author to have to argue back against mm -hmm. something yeah. like that because it makes you really see what you why you think that why you believe that and it can it can strengthen the book as long as you are able to to prevail well, and maybe that's what was going on was that the, the, her editor was telling her, you have to tell me why this ending works. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And it was a great ending. Like it was fabulous. It was. So it was good that it <laughs> oh, did not change. Like I, it, it I ended, want to read that book. It ended very well. Oh, cool. Um, I read her first book, I think, but not. Um, okay. Um, lovely. My lovely wife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was dark. It, I she's a, she's got a dark mind <laughs> like even when I talk to her she and I have become friends I'm like I talk to her and I see like what she posts on her social and I'm like like I'll heart it or like it I'm like you're not somebody I'll ever cross like you have a dark <laughs> mind I'm like it's lovely but I'm like I don't know how you come up with these things oh amazing yeah yeah it's quite nice when you can put put your whole dark side into her <laughs> she has <laughs> she's made it her career which is really uh, lovely though oh uh, yeah fantastic it's a real page turner i'm like they're ones you want to like keep getting through because you're like oh my goodness you know so yeah it's just fun but then sometimes um, i'm like oh that's dark i'm like i can't tell anybody i read that <laughs> <laughs> oh oh fantastic i'll um oh uh, yeah I, I want to read her that book um what was it called? The road trip uh, one? That one is, oh gosh, what did I just say now? I lost it. He started it? No, not that yeah. one. Yeah, 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 that's it. It's he started it. He started it's it's it. my lovely book. wife. He started it. And then there's the school one that she just wrote ah. with Teddy. Oh, yeah. I like the that. The private one school too. one for your own good. For your own good. Yeah, that was good too. Yeah. She did a lot of poison research on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we Amazing. were talking though because uh, we very much liked your book we very much liked hers however there are books that not that that sometimes none of us like it mm. just happens you know none of us like yet we can still discuss them and yeah. it's almost and sometimes if there's a book that everybody loved it's almost a harder discussion than yeah 
if there's a book that mix, that's interesting. Mm. And if there's a book that everybody disliked, you know, but and it's, it's not a, a weird alchemy discussion. about. Yeah, discussion. it's not like anybody is being mean or harsh, but the discussions are so fascinating because there's like bits and pieces that stood out or resonated, you know what I'm saying? Or like struck a chord, which is maybe why it was off putting. And so that's what's interesting sometimes. Like those are better discussions or more dynamic discussions I've found in the three years. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, Phyllis it's, said, if everybody loved it, it's just like, yep, it was great. It was so good. And you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real page turner, you know what I'm saying? And then you're done and you're like, <laughs> oh, well, that's all we have to say. Like, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And you're like, oh. yeah, I mean, that's oh. awesome. <laughs> Sometimes there's just not enough in the story to be discussed. There's just mm. not enough context there. It's you know, much lighter, much more predictable, or the characters aren't as complex. So there's just not as much for to kind of trigger the imagination for people. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It is interesting what what books make make good discussions. I mean, you how how often do you do you guys meet? Quite a bit. Twenty something times a year, I guess. It was 23 last year. I think wow. we have 25 or 26 this year. Wow. It used to just be one a month. Like the first year that I started, it was one a month, but then there were way too many books that I wanted to read. Or... <laughs> That's so great. So people kind of come in and you, you know, you're not required. We're not required to be here no. every time where we get kicked out so far. Yeah. Has, <laughs> so you might have, you know, six or eight people. You might have more. You might have fewer. Like today, it's it's kind of nice. And then it's fluid like that. If people yeah. have that day that they can come. And then if the next time they can't, mm. or, you know. Well, and everybody brings such an interesting perspective based on what they do or who they are, which is a lot of fun, you know. So depending on who comes into the mix. The discussions are always very different and then I feel like I love meeting with authors because you guys bring your own perspective and things to talk about and you educate us on interesting things along the way which is super fun you know whether it's how the book evolved and things that have changed like you said in the editing and writing process or I think Sarah Vaughn showed us all her covers like for around the world she had her book and so she had every cover yeah. from around the world oh and yeah we were talking about just different cultures and what is acceptable or you know what I'm saying what people are more off put by in different mm -hmm. parts of the world so mm -hmm. that was fascinating we had Karen Dion on and she was having one of her books made into a movie so she had like she started with a slide set of like the presentation of like it was actively being filmed at that point oh. which was kind of cool yeah wow she some of the they she got to go on to the location and see how they were putting it together oh my that God. was that was so that's the fun part, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Whether it's we get to learn like what you originally intended for an ending or you know what I'm saying? What got yeah. cut is yeah. super fun to me, especially when you kind of become invested in the story and you're like, oh, like I could have <laughs> seen that happening. <laughs> oh, that's really fun. It's such a such a great um thing to do. I love that you have authors. Yeah, well. I, I do too I'm so grateful you guys will give us your time that's why we like to make sure we support you back and oh, everything that's else so lovely that's that is that's so cool and are you are you kind of across the U.S. are you are you mm -hmm. distributed yeah. all over the country that's oh I love I'm that in, as well I'm in Seattle Washington most of the people in our club are in Georgia Atlanta Georgia area um, we have people from all over yeah well, he started this as we were going to meet for brunch, oh, pre-pandemic, Atlanta, Atlanta yeah. people, but then that quickly fell apart because of COVID, and so she's she's changed it into meeting at, via Zoom. So we're everywhere. Yeah, oh, that's that's so good. And then it's allowed the authors to come. Like if we were brunching, you know what I'm saying? We could yeah. have authors present and be respectful to time and everything else like that, and like allowed restaurant. So it's been really nice. Yeah, oh, that, that is so nice. That's quite lovely. Well, wow. thank you so much for joining today. I'm oh. excited for what Evie Green is doing next. We can't yeah, wait. I will let you know. And as soon as there is um, some form of proof copy of it, I will get them to 
to send that you would be fabulous one or some um yeah if you yeah. can send us some we'll do it with the group or if we can even get some digital copies and a few physical copies that would be fabulous yeah yeah that we'll way we that. can get you more reviews oh thank you yeah that makes it makes such a difference that having having some reviews when the book comes out is yeah. um it, it, it's amazing for for authors it really is so we can do that for you for sure so we'll make oh, sure you have you. whatever we can have. we'll do a countdown for you i'm like I, you don't oh. want to share a countdown i'll count down for you <laughs> we'll Brittany sure is, we we Brittany's a very books. talented designer oh fantastic yeah so i will use my skills to support oh. you you know i love you so oh, i appreciate you. your time well, I love being you with us. Too. thank <laughs> you so much and yeah thanks so much for for reading it means it means so much to me it really does i mean that's why we do it so that in the hope that people will read the book so it's it's like everything that you want as an author it really is yeah thank you. well happy easter to everybody thank yeah you for being with yeah. us phyllis do you want to hold the book up and we'll do a screenshot really fast okay since you have it okay hold on on my ipad and i gotta find the button all right ready one two three perfect got it all right oops turn my video off I'm like, I, on my iPad, I never know where all the buttons are on it. I'm like, I usually do it from my computer at home. Yeah, but when I, I can never find anything on an iPad. Never. I can't either. I'm like, it's not just as Even intuitive though I've had as it I for want years. it to be. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Well, well thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for thank being you. with us. Thank you oh, very you. much. And, uh, yeah, thanks for reading my book. Of course. Happy Easter. We can't wait for the yeah. next one. Keep me posted. <laughs> you can just email me and we'll get it moving get everything yeah. in motion wonderful thank you perfect all right bye guys happy sunday bye bye, bye.